I have had some that have attacked people in my building or have attacked other dogs in my building that I've been afraid of. Um, if you walk in in the morning and there are two pit bulls that have climbed the fence and are going at each other, it is not a pleasant situation to walk into. It's scary and it's hard to get them apart. And it's scary to get them apart because they can, in a flash, turn and go after you. So in, in that regard, I'm not a big fan. This is our foster dog, or my foster dog right now, my, my boyfriend's foster dog, Teddy. We learned about him because a couple of months ago we got hooked up with um, a girl by the name of Joey who's starting her own rescue who has this really cool program with Chicago's Pound. So the worst of the worst is what I would say is why I want to make that point. We typically take dogs out of shelters. Um, when they arrive at the shelter, it's usually either as a stray or an owner surrender. Um, they arrive in a variety of different conditions. Um, some of them can come from horribly abusive situations. Strays can be completely emaciated. Um, you know, the variety of these instances where these animals come from, it, you know, it, it, can, it can range so dramatically. I got my, the, my current pit bull, I adopted him out of Chicago Bully Breed Rescue. I saw him online, um, submitted an application to him. Um, they did uh, a background check on myself. They contacted my landlord to make sure it was okay. Um, then they came and did a home inspection, a uh, yard inspection. Um, they uh, wanted to make sure that I had um, space around the house so that he could go get outside and get his exercise and everything. Um, and then you come down and do a formal meeting and then after that, like, they see how everything goes. And then if you, if you want them, then you go ahead and adopt them at that point. I got Blue through a website called puppyfind.com. And um, I searched and searched and searched for a while just because you're, that's a little nerve wracking on coming up with a pit bull around the Chicago area. It took about a week almost. It wasn't just like you could walk in and walk out with a dog. Uh, they want to make sure, especially with the pit bull breed, they want to make sure that they're not going to an environment to where they're going to be forced into a situation like where they're fighting or they're going to be in a home environment that's not, uh, not friendly for dogs in general, not just a pit bull. But the, the background check and everything that they put me through was just, uh, very, it's very extensive, but it's also, um, it's, it's refreshing, I guess, to, to know that they're not just uh, handing them out to anybody. I adopted my first dog, Honor, from Chicago Land Bully Breed Rescue, and when I adopted her, I started volunteering. Um, it was just a natural course of action for me, and then uh, I started, I agreed to foster my second dog and decided that he was actually not going anywhere and I officially adopted him and I've continued to stay with the organization and help them out even though I'm no longer um, a foster home for them. We were learning about more rescue uh, stories, and Teddy's specifically stood out to me. I mean, I already have another dog, I have a cat. We kind of felt like we were doing our role by volunteering for the day. But when I saw his picture, when I learned about his story, and when I also knew that he was sick with heartworm at that moment, um, I just couldn't think of him trying to recover, you know, with getting out once a day and no love, or 
minimal love and you know a cold cage all night long. I had been working with um, a campaign. It was formerly called the End Dog Fighting Campaign. It's now called Pets for Life, the, the Humane Society of the United States. And um, through that, I had a lot of exposure to pit bulls and um, different owners. And you know, I've seen some dogs surrendered. I saw some dogs in horrible situations. I saw some dogs in low-income communities that really their owners were doing the best that they could for them and, and were doing quite well. So I saw a wide range of um, where these animals were coming from. The original owner that was doing these dog fighting, I don't even, episodes, I don't even know what you call them, was, you know, um, ultimately went to jail for what he did. It was that awful. And as you can see, this it was within that year that they cut off his ears and he has scars all over his face that are well healed at this point. But um, it's, it's a fact that that was done to him within the first year of his life. And then they thought that they had put him into a better situation and ultimately learned that while it wasn't nearly as horrifying as his first year. He just was pretty neglected. Um, the assumption is, is that he wasn't fed well, he didn't go out a lot, and he was probably caged a lot. Ultimately, people had to go in. He was found with another 105 dogs that were in similar situations, had to go in and rescue all of these dogs out of that situation. So it wasn't where a human was beating him or making him bait for a dog fight. You know, it wasn't nearly as horrifying as the first year. It still wasn't a great situation. And due to these poor conditions, and I'm assuming a lot of poop that wasn't cleaned up because you get heartworm through mosquito bites, he had acquired uh, heartworm in that time as well. Backyard breeding tends to be a problem because it lends to the overpopulation problem. A lot of times people breed their dogs, um, they don't know the, the heritage of these animals and that can potentially lead to problems. We can have dogs that are um, mentally unstable from bad breeding. We can have animals that have um, bad hips for instance, they're just like very disproportionate and that tends to lead to medical problems because of bad breeding. And then also to, um, you know, everybody wants to breed a dog and sell the puppies and selling those puppies, especially in this economy, is becoming harder and harder and harder, especially when thousands upon thousands of them are dying in shelters. People can go to a shelter and adopt an animal for a lot less money they can buy from a breeder. And, and so there needs to be some sort of regulation against the, the backyard breeding because it's, it is the source in my belief, it is the major source of the problem with so many animals being in shelters. After you know having those few conversations, I went, I, we did a meet and greet, I brought Silo with to make sure he was good, and then ultimately picked him up and brought him here. We made a lot of progress within the first week, so a lot you know escalated quickly. However, his initial couple of days were rough. Um, we couldn't get him to eat the first 24 hours. He would just lift his leg up and pee randomly, probably from sitting in a cage and feeling comfortable doing that. And um, calling him by name or even like getting down on your knees and you know trying to entice him to come to you, all three of those things were difficult. Socializing a pit bull isn't really different from, from any other dog. Um, it needs to um, take walks and see the world. If you if you take a dog, and it's regardless of breed, if you take a dog and its only um, knowledge of the world is the house that it lives in and its backyard, when it gets out in the world and you take it for its first walk, it's going to be overstimulated. The best thing you can do for your dog, regardless of breed, is to socialize it. Take it out on walks, take it you know, in the car, some animals, some of the dogs that we've uh, pulled have never been in cars and they freak out when they first go for their car ride. Walk pretty well on the leash. When they first get going, they pull a little bit. Um, and I think I told you before, they can be reactive to other dogs. Mm -hmm. um, so, you don't know, have to respond to that unfortunately. You need to, to set boundaries within the real world. And by doing that, you're gonna have a dog that can go for walks in the park and, and see other dogs and see joggers and not want to chase them and not want to chase cars. A few months ago, um, there was a, a really very unfortunate and horrible attack on a jogger um, in Chicago. And that, that man actually almost lost his foot. 
I don't really like being in between a pit bull that's focused on going after someone because they're strong and they're hard to get apart and they grab hold and, and I have been in a situation where I have had a pit bull that was walking by a cage, grabbed a dog that was in a cage and I literally had a broom handle in this dog's mouth trying to pry it off this other dog and couldn't get it to let go. It's not instinctive to uh, attack, it's instinctive to please their owner. That's really, like, they, they are, were bred to fight, but it's just because that they listen so well. As a rescue, it's our belief that had these dogs, one, been vetted and been neutered um, and socialized, that the likelihood of this attack would be pretty slim. Dogs that have come from negative situations that um, may have been used in, in fighting scenarios or horribly abused, Dogs live in the moment, and so that doesn't mean because they have a horrible past, it doesn't mean that they can't be good house pets, and it can't, doesn't mean they can't d learn to live in a home environment. He's not my other dog. You know, my other dog wants to go to the door, meet and greet, bring them in, let them know who, who he is, and beg them for attention along the way. So we don't see that out of him yet. He's just a lot slower, a lot slower. I wouldn't say completely untrusting, you know, where you can't get him to you know, be interested. But he, he found a real safe spot underneath the dining room table. So that's one of his little spots to kind of hang and wait. He does a lot of watching and looking. And then as he sees that Silo's getting good reactions and everyone's, you know, in a good mood, then he starts to crawl out. And by the end of the night, if he hasn't had something that's kind of tweaked him, you know, it's a similar thing where you're like, okay, Teddy, <laughs> you can go back, you know, because he can start to then get a little needy and, um, you know, pushy for attention. However, um, every now and then something can happen and he goes into hiding. It doesn't happen often. It happens less and less. I think the first time, you know, he'd gotten to a point where he was really comfortable playing with my dog. And then, I don't know what it was, something a little bit more aggressive happened and boom, he was behind the bed, sleeping and hiding. So, you know, we still have these isolated issues. As you can see, he's very trusting with me at this point the first week this certainly didn't happen so a lot of progress but um still a little bit to go still a little bit to go Some of them are the very best dogs I've ever had in here. I can think of a couple of them that I would have taken home in a flash. And I've been here a long time and don't take home many dogs. I just don't. I think the overall perception of pit bulls is starting to change. I think very, very slowly what we're seeing is that these dogs are being based individually. Um, not in every city in, in the United States, but certainly that it, I think it's growing. I had a lot of people stop and just compliment me on how the dog looks and how it, it's, it's walking and everything. I, it's uh, really well perceived in this area, for sure. So it really boils down to, for me, individuality. It has nothing to do with their breed. It has to do with what they are as a dog, whether they're a pit bull, a German Shepherd, a Rottweiler, a Chow, whatever the case may be, I want them to be a dog that's adoptable because I want to find them all homes. It's just not always possible.